In the previous part of this lighting tutorial, we've created a texture in a substance designer. And um, what I did, I um, just offset the texture a couple times and played with the parameters and basically I managed to get uh, those three examples. And in this video, I would like to show you how to create a basic mesh in Houdini, which will be procedural as well. Um, so we can edit it very, very quickly and we could get various shapes and export it into the engine. So as you can see, I'm just playing with the uh, seed value and that way I get the different shapes um, for this mesh. Uh, we've got procedural UVs and basically with this slider we are able to get a lot of shapes that we could use in the in the game engine. Yeah, so what we're going to do, we're just going to create this uh, very simple graph. I'm going to also show you how to create cross section uh, of this plane. Um, and, you know, a tool basically that you'll be able to use very quickly and it will be, it should be very, very easy to um, use for you as well. All right, so let's dive in into Houdini. Right, so now we are in Houdini. Uh, before we start, um, make sure you have side effects labs tools available and updated so basically go into this tab and if you can see the icons it means you have the tools if you don't then update the tool basically so click on this icon and update the tool and it's gonna ask you probably to um, restart restart Houdini okay um, so your panels might look um, a little bit different I like to have those separated you might have just one but it doesn't matter because we'll be working only in, um, in one so basically, let's start with the geometry node. We're going to call it lightning mesh. And double click on it and I'm going to start with line. So as you can see, we've got line, simple line here. I'm going to enable points because I want to see how many points I've got. Also, I'm just going to press D while being in the viewport. I'm going to go into background and just change the um, color scheme to gray it's just personal, personal preference you don't have to do that okay so we've got line now let's add resample node because I want to be able to um, have a full control over how many points I actually have got uh, on my uh, on my mesh and this spline so maximum segments I'm gonna start maybe with five uh, next node, I'm just going to add point jitter. And as you can see, it does crazy stuff. So I'm just going to zero the axis because I want this only to be two axes. And maybe point two on this axis, but I'm going to start with zero and see how it goes. Also, scale seems to be a little bit too big. So maybe point three might be a good idea. So as you can see, we've got this seed here and basically this will give us control um, over the meshes. Basically, that's how you're going to generate the meshes. But let's have a little bit more control over the, the look of the, our lightning mesh. As you can see, this node point jitter it actually alters the um, location of our bottom at top point. And this is not what we probably, we probably don't want this basically. So I'm going to create a group node. Um, yep, plug it in between, I'm going to select it and as you can see our, all our points are actually um, selected now. So I'm going to change group type to points, I'm going to select bounding box and basically whenever the point is in the bounding box it's um, select this with, it, with this group. So I'm going to change the name of the group as well to top bottom points I'm gonna make sure that the center is 0.5 so it will be always in the middle and I'm gonna change the box size to 0.95 just to exclude those points the, the top and bottom point now I'm gonna go to the point jitter and I already got Oh no, actually don't. Okay, I'm gonna select it and then you can see group here. There's nothing in here. So I'm just gonna click on this arrow and select those two points. So now 
it's not going to affect um, those two points, which is essentially what we want. And next node will be sweep, but the lab curve sweep rather than normal sweep. So we got this crazy thing, which is not probably what we want. So let's change it to line division one. I'm going to change the scale of the mesh as well. And I want the bottom part to be tapered. So I'm going to leave it at 0.15, maybe 0.2. So as you can see, our mesh is kind of crazy, probably not usable in the game engine. And that's because of the up vector. So I'm going to change this to zero and maybe change this one to one. So now I'm going to go back to our point jitter, maybe change the scale of it to something a bit more smaller, like, you know, something like 0.15. And now if you're going to change the seed, you'll have basically different meshes which you can export. Feel free to play with this uh, uniform scale as well, just in case you want a, a little bit different scale. Okay. So now let's try to create a material so we can actually import our texture into Houdini just to make sure that we actually are working with the texture because the next step will be UVs. So I'm just going to go to the material palette and I'm just going to drag this first one, principal shader. I'm going to double click on it and change its name to lightning texture. Let's go to my second window for some reason. Select this and now I have the options of the shader. So I'm just going to go to textures and say that my base color, I want it to be texture. I'm going to select my texture now. Okay. I'm going to go back, select the lightning mesh and geometry node and okay. And in the render tab, I'm going to just select my material I've just created. Nothing is there basically because I don't think we have UV. So um, let's create UV transform node and let's go to our UVs. So we can go by pressing um, here, set view and UV viewport. Okay, so as you can see, these are UVs, and obviously, this is not what we want. So let's type here. I'm just going to give you. Um, the commands I'm using for scale and to be honest I probably found them somewhere on the internet or come up with them on my own I, I really can't remember so I'm just going to use scale and dollar sign size x I'm going to copy that paste to oops I'm going to copy that go into Y and change it to Y as well. So now you can see our UVs are basically stretched. Okay, so um, let's go to UV view. Oh, maybe this. Yeah, here. Select the background and select our lightning to texture to be our background. And just so we can see a bit better, I'm just going to select a wireframe ghost. So what we want, we want our UVs to be as close as possible to our texture. 
And to do this, we're just gonna create another UV transform. And we're gonna change its scale to, let's try maybe with 0.5 on the Y and pivot point to 0.5 on the Y as well. So for, if we're gonna use only this texture and we make sure that this texture won't go out of the UV boundaries, I mean, this is basically what we want. So let me go back to perspective view. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our texture now displayed on the mesh. What I don't like actually is that it it's scaled on this axis as well. So I'm gonna go to our point jitter node and maybe alter it to be like 0.4, 0.2 on the um, height axis as well. So now basically we've got a tool that help us to generate those meshes very very quickly the few things that you can actually do to improve that tool is basically um, before you um, plug your nodes into the curve sweep you might have either another resample and basically it's going to give a bit more subdivisions into your uh, line and makes it a bit more smooth if, if that's what you want or you can use subdivide node as well and plug that on instead i find that subdivide actually gives me better results but i have less control over the distribution so let me stick maybe with rest sample for now The cool thing about this is that you can actually add another point shooter here. We'll select our group. And maybe you would just want it to affect some other axis, basically. I'm gonna delete this one. Okay, so basically this is our very simple tool to generate those meshes. So now let's say that you actually wanna create some cross sections in case you, you just wanna create some muzzle flashes or maybe you need this lighting to be um, as a cross section. So it should be very simple. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna copy and paste all those three nodes. And in the sweep curve, we're just gonna pick different vector like this one. We're gonna use merge node. And we should have a cross section with UVs. And now if you're gonna go to the point jitter, we can play with the seed value and generate and different meshes for our lightnings. Before you export it, make sure you run it through transform and I usually call it game engine scale. You want to start with maybe 50. Some people put it into 100, but I'm going to start with 50. So that's really big, uh, but basically it's going to look okay in our game engine. Okay, so that's the whole process basically to create this very, very simple mesh. The idea is just so we can basically create like a, you know, a lot of those meshes very, very quickly. And it's just a tool that you might use for something else for a different projects. For example, you don't need the point jitter, right? So you can have this and imagine that might be your a muzzle flash that you might use for, you know, weapons or 
like literally anything. If you wanna, if you don't want a cross section, just cut this line using your Y button. So press Y, and you got the scissors, and you can cut the notes, and you can have a simple, simple plane. Okay. Right. So I'm hoping you're gonna start in uh, with Houdini a little bit more because I think it's uh, it's already widely used in the game studios, and I think most or if not all the effects artists should know Houdini it's a very procedural tool that helps and speeds up so your workflow so you know to create to come up with you know the lightning it's probably gonna take you I don't know a little bit longer than model single mesh but by doing this you have automated your process for creating those meshes and now you have a tool that allows you to um, generate lightnings very very fast and also alter it as well right so I hope you find it useful and uh, I know it's a not texture uh, tutorial this time but um, it's been requested to start showing some meshes how I make my meshes and other stuff as well so I'm just trying to mix it up for you thanks for watching